The relative reactivity of group 2A and period 3 elements can be assessed by observing their reaction with oxygen in the air while burning in a hot flame. This exercise is described in the protocol of discovering some periodic properties of elements as something you should be doing in the lab. The reconfiguration of the general chemistry laboratories with a single gas line in the hood makes that impossible, so this video is intended to allow you all to observe the reactions. The elements to be tested are magnesium, aluminum, and silicon, along with uh, sodium, which was shown in the previous video, in period three, and magnesium and calcium in group 2A. Some of you should have already had a hint about the relative reactivity of calcium uh, when, from the density experiment when you put it in water and it dissolved and bubbled violently, uh, producing gas. To begin with, we need to go and remove this coating, which is actually the reaction of the metals with oxygen in the air from the metals. I'm going to demonstrate how to do that uh, with uh, the uh, magnesium. You just take a, um, it's called Scotch-Brite, it's intended to go and buff up the surfaces of metals, and we literally just go and scrape off the surface, and as we do that, the surface that we see becomes shinier, all right? Uh, we would have done that with all of the metals except for calcium. Uh, it's probably worthwhile recognizing that the color of the buffed surface uh, is going to change according to the softness of the metal. So with that in mind, why don't we go over to the hood and see what uh, burning one of these pieces of metal would look like. A hot flame is something which is called a non-luminous flame. It's one which doesn't flicker with bits of yellow, which are evidence of uh, uncombusted carbon. Rather, in a luminous flame, the balance between the amount of gas that's flowing and the amount of oxygen is such that the uh, products of the combustion are just CO2 and water. The way you would have adjusted this would, in fact, have been to adjust the amount of oxygen through this dial on the bottom, or alternatively, the amount of gas in through by uh, turning this uh, cuff. Notice when I go and increase the amount of gas, I wind up getting the uh, yellow flickers, and it's only when I go and either turn down the amount of gas or increase the amount of oxygen do I get the non-luminous flame, which is has this bright blue center V in the middle. The hottest part of this flame is at the very, very top of that uh, cone. This stage of the game, I'm gonna put in a piece of ca uh, magnesium, and immediately you'll start seeing how, and look at that. One of the things that's important to look at is what do the products look like? You will notice that the magnesium now has this bright white uh, coating. That is, in fact, the magnesium oxide that we, in fact, have generated on this piece of magnesium. Clearly, it was highly reactive. Uh, I'm going to now confess up that I had actually uh, started to burn it a little bit before we showed this uh, demo, just for you to be able to see how uh, quickly how the flame was observed. The okay, the next piece we're going to go and look at it is calcium. Calcium is also in the group 2A metals, and um, it is below uh, magnesium in that uh, group. Now, the surface of the metal is very, very gray in look and appearance, and what we want to be able to observe is how quickly it turns white. And the point is that almost immediately it's turning white, even before it was turning white uh, for uh, the magnesium. Uh, as it turns out, this, this, and you'll also notice how we're getting to see how it's burning, see the uh, bright red color on the surface, and now we're seeing the same white coating on the piece of metal. Um, as it turns out, calcium is not going to burst into that great bright, bright flame, uh, but the real point is that the reaction is the formation of the white colored oxide on the surface of the metal. And that happened 
at the very, very least, as quickly as it happened with magnesium, and perhaps even more so because I had started the process with the magnesium ahead of time. Okay, so now we're going to start looking at, we're going to try to compare other metals in the uh, period three uh, with uh, magnesium. The first one up is aluminum. Um, where you'll notice that this guy actually looks more shiny to begin with, but let's go and see what happens as we put him in the flame. I'm going to try to remind you that probably by this time with the calcium we were already seeing flickers of it burning. The flame had started to turn red and while I'm seeing a couple of flickers they're not in the uh, super hot flame keep holding on to this for a little while. The surface does appear to be getting a little whiter. Uh, it's not quite as shiny, but it looks like it's a little bit more luminescent, you know, a little bit brighter in white color. Oh, we're starting to see some, yellow, some uh, red color of it burning, but it's certainly not as flamboyant either as the uh, magnesium or as the calcium. We'll do this for a little bit longer. It is turning white on the surface. But I think you can see that the uh, reaction is def definitively slower than it was with the other two. All right, last one up is now Silicon, who is also in period three, and we're gonna try putting him in the flame. You'll notice he was very, very shiny to begin with. Very, very patient. And we're being very, very patient. And it continues to be shiny. We're seeing we're getting some of the yellow flaming, but the surface of the metal does not appear to be changing in color. Well, maybe now it is. Well, let's go and pull it out. Strikes me that it looks exactly the same. <laughs> it's keeping rem remembering that we're not so much looking for a flame or the big flash, we're looking for the formation of a white oxide coating on the surface. I think we've probably gone and been running the silicon for at least as long as all the others combined. Do it a little bit for a little bit longer for you to look at it and I'm going to pull it out and it strikes me that the surface is as shiny as it ever was. All right. Um, an aside, uh, something to think about with regard to what we've seen in this series is think about yard furniture that your parents might have that was made out of aluminum. When it's been left out in the rain and things like that, if you come back to it at the end of the season, you'll wind up feeling a white, uh, sort of a sticky kind of a surface to aluminum legs. That's, that white stuff is in fact the oxide coating that you would get on aluminum after a while. 